He can cook a shoe, and it'll taste delicious. You don't even have to bring your own, he says. And that's neat. It's Tom White. This is Teaching to the Test Pattern. Hey, buddy, thank you so much for downloading this episode of Teaching to the Test Pattern. I'm Tom White, your host for the show. And today, a very interesting conversation with a guy that I hope you've heard of. And if you haven't, I hope he becomes a part of your career path and part of something that you do with and for your students. Uh, Jason Boone is a videographer, a special effects artist, a author, a um, just an all-around guy that I really, really am blessed to have had on the show. He is uh, he his his hub is BooneLovesVideo.com. You can see his stuff on Premium Beat and a bunch of other places that he writes for. Super, super excited to introduce him to you if you are not aware of him, and also super excited that as this 2020 school year wraps up. And as it wraps up, you are hopefully looking forward to the 2021 school year. That's 20-21, 2020 2020-2021 school year. That's going to be tough to say this year. And hopefully, I'm hoping and praying that you are blessed to have a, a new facility coming or you're updating a facility in, in Georgia. You have what are called construction-related equipment grants, and I want to introduce you to my friends at Amatrace if that is the case for you. So check it out. You have an idea on what you want to, to do. You have an idea. Your, your administration has an idea on what they want you to do. You can make that idea a reality. Just send them some blueprints and a dream, and they will take care of you. The great thing about Amatrace is they just do video. They're not talking to you and then going down the hall to your automotive teacher and then going down the hall to your construction teacher. They're talking to you about video production because that's what they do. They use industry standard equipment. They use every, I mean, everything about what they do is industry standard. Here is the blessing for you. They know how to navigate the paperwork that comes with using construction related equipment grants. Go look them up. A-M-I-T-R-A-C-E dot com. And while you're doing that, check out this part one of two with my of my conversation with Jason Boone from BooneLovesVideo.com. Teaching to the test pattern. So that's that's unfortunate. But cool. Well, let's you ready to get started? Sure, sure. Cool. Sure thing. All right. So um, I am talking with Jason Boone who is in France, just outside of Paris. And you, you, may, you may recognize the name, Boone, because Boone Loves Video is, is a website that uh, many of you may be familiar with. And um, Jason, thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk with me on a, what's five o'clock your time, noon my time on a Sunday. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so just uh, tell me kind of who you are, what you do. So, um, as you said, uh, my name is Jason Boone and I have, um, well, right now I work freelance a lot and I write uh, for a number of different publications and produce video tutorials for some publications you might um, know of, including No Film School, Premium Beat, Shutterstock, I mean, a few others called their School of Motion, um, Motion Array, there's a bunch out there. So I work as a freelancer and I'm mainly just producing um mainly video tutorials. I also have my own uh, YouTube channel where I do mainly After Effects tutorials and anything that kind of generally interests me in the video production world. Sometimes I'll do, you know, filmmaking tips and tricks. Other days it's, uh, you know, After Effects related content. Other days it's Premiere Pro. So, yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of a we- weird situation. Now, I've always wanted to be um, uh, kind of working from home, you know, remote worker. And now it's, I finally gotten myself into that position. And it's interesting because you have your own challenges when in, in that it's different. It's a lot different working from home as compared to working in an office with coworkers. And how did you, we'll come back to, to working at home with, with, with the current situation, but how did you get started sure. in video production? So 
started way a long time ago. I have an older brother and we used to, you know, as an older brother, we're only two years apart. I always wanted to do what he was doing. And, um, he started taking video production classes while in high school. So I kind of got interested in video and he was also a skateboarder. So I was skateboarding with him. And then when I got interested in video, my mom bought me a video camera for Christmas when I was about 17, I think. And so I really got into that. I was making skateboarding videos and, you know, by the time college came around, my mom's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta think about what you want to do. What, you know, and I had no idea. It's like, what's my favorite thing I'd like to do is video editing. I really liked editing my skateboarding videos and I really liked shooting skate videos. Um, so I went to college and was just taking, I was just doing general studies. And then I started to do some electives and video production just to kind of test the waters. And I ended up really, really enjoying it. And so I said, okay, I'll let's, let's give this a try. And then, um, my mom, once again, my mom was always hooking me up. She knew a guy, um, she was friends with a guy that worked for a local, uh, PBS affiliate TV station. And she said, Hey, I met this guy. He was out shooting where I work and I got his card and seems like a really nice guy. Why don't you call him? So I called him and he was a really, he's one of my best friends now. And he said, Hey, if you want to freelance for the TV station, uh, why don't you, why don't you come out and, and give it a try? So I went to, I went to like a school board meeting with them. They shot <laughs> weekly school board meetings and I must've made an impression because I went there and I was just interested in everything. I was like, wow, cool. It was like a, you know, one of those little four camera shoots. He had a switcher out and he uh, was letting me switch a little bit. And I must have been really excited because he's like, what? he's like, you, you find this to be fun. And I was like, man, this is so interesting. And he's like, you know, we could, we could pay you to come out here. <laughs> and I said, yeah, man, pay me. I'll, I'll come out, run camera. I'll, you know, set up the microphones, whatever you want. So that turned into a job while I was in college. And then from there I was putting all that money into buying gear and doing all my own side projects, which is kind of blossomed from there into freelancing and, and then they ended up hiring me full when I finished college and I worked there for a while. I worked about eight years as a production specialist for them, working on TV shows, um, live events, sporting events, all kinds of different types of broadcast productions. Yeah. So where did you go to college? I went to UCF um, and got a bachelor's degree in television production and I minored in film. And then I got a master's degree at University of South Florida I studied um, digital journalism and design. Excellent. So you, you mentioned just a minute ago about working to the point where you get um, you got to work from home. What was your normal day kind of pre-pandemic before before everybody was home all the time? Pre-pandemic. Um, so I live here in the suburbs of Paris and we have a really, really small apartment. And pre-pandemic would be, um, you know, four days a week, I take my son, he's, he's one and a half. I would take him to the daycare around eight 30. We walk over to the daycare, drop him off. My wife goes to work. She's in, um, she's a primary school teacher. And then I would just, um, come back here and work until about, uh, four when I'd go back and, or no, I pick up my son at five and then take care of him. And then my wife would come home and, you know, get ready for, get ready for dinner and all that. So it would be mainly just here at my computer working, whether I'm researching um, topics or whether I'm actually editing or shooting a tutorial or, you know, a variety of different things. So where do you come up with, with your content? Like, do you have a, a formula, so to speak, or is it just kind of what hits you as you're walking back and forth? Or, you know, for me, it's, it's my, it's my commute. That's where most of my ideas come from. So what's that for you? Yeah. It's definitely, I definitely get inspiration during specific times of day. And I've noticed that since starting to work from home, it's like, it's funny because at first I would fight it, but now I embrace it. Like between noon and, and 2 PM, I'm useless. Like I just, I, I can't work. It's, it's horrible. So now I just kind of take it easy <laughs> between those times, but it's always really early in the morning and late at night, I'll get ideas and I have a notebook and I have a Google doc of just ideas so I just put those down and then sometimes I'll put those ideas together and see if I can make a, you know, kind of Frankenstein some of those ideas into something. And it's a lot of just inspiration from, um, I try to do side projects specifically for getting ideas for tutorials. And, and I, it's a really important for me to keep learning. Um, so I always do other tutorials and then I'll do a project and then find out what I learned from those. And I'll sometimes combine 
um, those, or sometimes I'll even watch other tutorials. And a lot of the times I'll think, oh, I can, I know how to do that better. or I know an interesting spin on that from something that I did in the past. And then I'll kind of create, I can create content that way as well. So are you filming a lot now? I mean, pre-pandemic, were you filming a lot? Or are you just in visual effects, special effects, design stuff? I film a lot as well. Um, depending on the tutorial, sometimes if it's After Effects related, um, I have like a tutorial set up here where I'll film myself and record, you know, do like screen captures on my computer as I'm explaining, like, let's say it's like a step-by-step how to uh, make a gradient in After Effects, for example. I'll film like an intro outro of myself and then I'll film me doing the tutorial, you know, I'll write a script before kind of a loose outline and then I'll shoot that, record it and then I'll post it and, and then I'll write the article. I'll, I'll take my outline that I wrote and then I'll flesh that out into a fully formed article and then I'll submit that. I do have to say that your tutorials visually uh, with the intros and the outros and then the content in the middle are are really more engaging than when when I just go to one and it's like, oh, well, it's just some computer screen with a guy's voice. Um, yeah. How do you keep up with, you know, with with Adobe changing the software every six months, adding things, taking things away? How do you keep up with yeah. that? Yeah. Well, you know, by the way, making, t- I've found that making tutorials is really an art form in itself. Mm-hmm. It's like a skill that it's quite difficult. Um, and I found that out when I first started doing it, I was like, man, this is, it's hard to keep, you know, right away people comment and say, Oh God, everybody does that. Or everybody that I hate this part of it or, or stop, you know, get microphones that don't pick up your keyboard or I learned so much in that first year <laughs> or two. Um, and I think a lot of, but us- with the dope, I think a lot of video Good. teachers are, are learning that lesson now with, with all of us having to do virtual content like that. Yeah, my, my YouTube buddies and I have been laughing and, and commenting on all the late night hosts um, working from home and, and like making fun. And I'm like, oh, look at that lighting or, uh, you know, giving them a hard time <laughs> or just making critiques and comments and thinking like, oh, these guys, you know, they have to experience what, we, what we're doing all the time. And it's a totally different uh, arena. But when it comes to keeping up with everything, um, I'm actually in the, um, I work with a PR team over at Adobe and they'll send me uh, press releases um, and I can check press releases for other companies and just keep up with what they're doing. Um, that can be a full-time job in and of itself sometimes because there's so many companies out there. They all have their own um, proprietary uh, language sometimes, you know, um, with their proprietary gear. So that, that stuff can be hard to keep up with. And so if you don't keep up with it, you can quickly get lost with that. Um, but usually when I'm writing uh, news pieces, those are always the most popular. If I'll do a video of like, here are all the new features in Adobe Premiere, if it's a big update or big release, um, that content is naturally always very, very popular. And I'm, um, I download the pre-releases of Adobe software. So I get to check out um, their software before and then I can play around with it and mess around with the pre-builds, which is always good fun. Gotcha. And that's one of those things where as an educator, and that's one of the reasons I started this podcast was, you know, it's not hard to get into a classroom and look up and it's been a year or five years. And, you know, I've had friends who, as I've talked to over the last several years, who realize that they've lost 10 years and they're, they're, still, they're oh, still doing the same things that they did 10 years ago. Teaching to the test pattern. That's right. If you have found that you are using the same technology from 10 years ago, really even five years ago, um, you may need to, to dig a little deeper in some some research to figure out what technologies you need to update in your program. I'm not telling you what to do, just telling you that uh, I, I say in, in one of these portions in my conversation with uh, Jason, that my biggest fear as an educator is that my students are going to leave my program, think they know what they're doing, think they're prepared and get out to the real world. And I have failed them because I was teaching older technology or older techniques. And uh, that would just be a huge failure on my part as 
their hopefully main influence in getting into uh, the industry. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. Make sure that you, you just go right now and listen to part two. It's available right now uh, where we talk a little bit about how he keeps up with uh, with changing technologies and he gives some advice on on what you should do if you're if you're interested in getting into the industry and things that we should tell our students who are interested in getting into the industry. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And as always, have a great day and go make some awesome. Teaching to the test pattern.